My name is Philip von Vigé. It is my pleasure to be give this talk today. I would like to say thank you to the organizer for organizing this talk. I am a professor at the School of uh, Humanities and uh, Computer Science at the Arbil Institute of Technology in Shenzhen. Today I will talk to you about how to analyze data to find some interesting or useful patterns in the data that can help us to take some decision or to learn something about our data. Okay, so before I start, I would like to say a little bit more about me. I am professor uh, in China at HIT since 2015. I am director of the Center of Innovative Industrial Design. I am also associate editor in chief of the Applied Intelligence Journal. And I do research on data mining, finding patterns in database, what we call pattern mining, and other things. Uh, at the bottom of this slide, you can see uh, where uh, Shenzhen is. It is beside Hong Kong. You can see some picture of our university. Okay. So, uh, nowadays, we have a lot of data in the businesses, the industry, uh, also in university or the government. Also, there is a huge amount of data stored in databases. So there is an important need about understanding this data because if we have a lot of data and we don't know what to do with the data, then it is not useful. Uh, even I have millions of uh, gigabytes of data. What can I do with this data? Okay, so. Uh, one possibility that is very popular today is to use machine learning or AI to do something with the data, like to do some predictions, for example. So there's a lot of work on machine learning. They, are, they will do some very accurate prediction. They allow you to take decisions, but a lot of times, like for the deep learning and so on, they work very well, but maybe you don't understand why, because it works like a black box. So it works very well, but you don't know why. And for the humans, for the decision makers, it is important not only to take the good decision, but to understand why. Okay. So in this talk, I will talk to you about one field in data mining, how to analyze data, where the goal it's not to take maybe the best decision, but the goal is more to understand the data. So we'll use different techniques to analyze the data and find some patterns that are useful, interesting, or maybe unexpected to learn something new about our data. So the, the goal, the focus is on understanding rather than to do some prediction. Okay, so in this talk, I will show you some examples about this. I will show you there are many kinds of patterns or information useful we can find in our data. Some of them is called item set, sequential patterns, episodes, periodic patterns, and so on. You will see the examples later. Okay, so here I show you some example at the bottom of the slide. For example, if we look at the shopping data, what the people buy online, Maybe we find that some people buy the cheese, the noodles, and other products together with some medicine or other things. So if we find such patterns about what the people buy together, then maybe we can do some promotion, sell them together and, and other things. But this is something we can easily understand. People buy this, then they buy also this together. So our goals with pattern mining is to discover some valuable knowledge we can understand is interpretable by humans. It's not the black box. So how can we do this? So first, I want to say that in this talk, I will focus on what we call the symbolic data. Symbolic data means data we can express as symbols. So here I show you a few examples of data that I usually consider in my work. So for example, here on the left, I have a transaction database. A transaction database 
is for example what some customers will buy in a store so here we have four transactions the first transaction say maybe that some people buy a apple b for bread c for cereal e for eggs and so on then another transaction is apple bread and eggs so if we look at this kind of transactions maybe we find some associations or patterns like everyone who buy apple also buy the eggs so a and e appear many times together for example this is one possibility okay another type of data i will talk to you about today is what we call a sequence so a sequence here we have the time like a followed by b followed by c followed by a followed by b by e and so on and we want to find patterns in the sequence okay so what could this data be for example this could be some events for example in a computer network so there's event a even b then c then a and so on so what we can find in such data is that a followed by b appear many times for example so if there are some event a in the computer network then it is followed by b then a again followed by b again and so on so that could be something we want to find then we can understand the data when some event a appear then it is always followed by b for example okay another example of data is what we call a sequence database so here on uh, unlike the previous example where we have only one sequence here we have many sequences so we have sequence one sequence two sequence three and four and so on and now we want to find what is similar between these sequence so for example this could be some sequence of products that the people buy in a store or it could be some sequence of instructions that some program use in your cell phone so the, the first program do some operation a b then c then a then b and so on the second program do a b b a c and so on so by looking at such database we can for example see that many programs do a followed by b and by c a followed by b and c a followed by b and c so by looking for example at the behavior of computer program we could find what is the common behavior of the virus or the malicious computer program to understand to or to detect what is a, a bad computer program okay so of course this kind of data can be found in many many other fields for example a sequence of symbols can also be a sequence of words in a text so we can use this uh, type of data to also model the text data and so on another example is the graph data so here i have a graph with some uh, verti vertices and some edges that have some labels like a b c so this could be for example a social network or other thing or a computer network with the links between the nodes that we want to analyze okay so now having said that we have some data we want to find some patterns in the data to understand the data so how can we do this so if we look at the patterns like what the people buy together in a store there can be millions of patterns for example people buy apple with eggs apple with bread bread apple with tomato and eggs and so on so we don't want to see all the patterns but we want to find only the interesting pattern and here what we call interesting depends on the user what you find interesting for your application so we need to use some interesting measures interestingness measure to decide what is an interesting pattern we need to tell the computer what kind of patterns we want to find so we use some measure like the support 
The support means the frequency, how many times. So for example, we want, maybe we want to find the patterns that appear the most often in our data. So for example, many people buy bread and eggs together. So we want to find something like this. Or maybe we want to use what we call the utility. Utility means, for example, the money. What will make the most money? So maybe diamond and something else is sold many times in the customer database. So it does not appear so often maybe, but it makes a lot of money. Other measure I will explain to you later is like periodicity, correlation, and so on. So in pattern mining, what we want to do? We have some data. We need to use some measure to say what we want to find. And then we apply some software or algorithms to find all the patterns that meet our criteria about what we want to find. And these patterns can then help us to understand the data or maybe also to take some decision. So if we don't want to look at millions of patterns, we also need to use some special algorithm that are efficient to find only the patterns that we want to find. And we don't want to look at all the possibilities. So to find the answer quickly, the solution quickly. Okay, so here I show you some example of problem. This is a classical problem in pattern mining. So here in my example on the left, I have what I call a transaction database. It is a database, for example, what the people buy in a store. So the first customer, T1, buy apple, bread, cake, and something else called D. Then the second customer buy A, C, D, and so on. And here, the goal is to find the sets of items that some people buy often together, that appear in many transactions of our database. So we need to set a parameter we call the minimum support, the frequency. So here, for example, I set to 0 0.5. It means like 50%. So I want to find all the sets of items in my database that appear together in at least 50% of the transaction of my database. So if I do this, the result is on the right, you can see here. So for example, I find that C and D together appear in 75% of the transaction. So we say it has a support or frequency of 75. So why? If you look on the left, we see C and D appear together in transaction one, C and D appear together in transaction two, and also in transaction four. So three transactions out of four, three divided by four means 75, okay, 75%. So we find all the sets of items or products that appear in at least 50% of the record or transaction in our database. Okay, so there are many algorithms to solve this problem, and it has many applications besides shopping. It could be other things also. So now I want to give you some intuition about how we can solve such problem. So how to solve this problem? The simple or naive approach is to look at the database, to read the database, to scan the database, and count the frequency of all the possible item set or set of items. So for example, I could count A, apple, then apple with bread, apple with cake, apple with D, A and eggs, A, B, C, A, B, D, and so on. So there are many, many possibilities. So here, in my example, I only have five items, A, B, C, D, E. But if I have N items, different items in my database, I could show that there will be two to the power of N uh, possible item sets, like A, A, B, A, B, C, 
BC, BCD, and so on. Okay. So if I have only five items, two to the power of n minus one is not so much. It is 31 possibilities. But if we have a big storm like a Jingdong or a Walmart, where there are maybe millions of items, this becomes very large, two to the power of one million, for example. So we need some efficient algorithms to find the solution quickly. So in the literature, there are several algorithms for this, like a priori, FP growth, and so on. So in this talk, I will not explain much about these algorithms uh, because we don't have so much time. Okay. Okay. So although there's a lot of works on finding the frequent item set or frequent patterns in the data, uh, there are some problems about what I showed you just before. The first problem is that what is a frequent patterns is not always interesting. So for example, if we look at shopping data, we find that many people buy the bread with the milk. So maybe it appears often in your database, but it does not make a lot of money. So maybe for the user, what makes the most money is more important than what appear often. So. Uh, another problem in what I showed you just before is that we don't look at the quantities of items. That means if you buy one bread or you buy 10 breads, it's considered to be the same. But of course, in the real life, if you buy 10 breads or 5 breads, it is not the same thing for the business. Okay. And another problem is that all items are considered as equally important. So if you sell one bread or you sell one diamond, it's considered to be equally important. But in real life, it is not. Selling one bread or one diamond does not make the same amount of money. So recently, so recently, another problem was presented that is very popular now. It's called the high utility item set mining. So here I will just show you the input and output to talk to you about the main problem. Okay. So the input is a transaction database, a little bit like what I showed you before. Here I have five transactions, but not only I have the items that the people buy, but also I have some quantities. So here, for example, the first transaction say that one person has bought one apple, five bread, one cake, one egg, and so on. Okay. And also, we have another table we call the profit table. So here we have one apple make $5 profit, one bread make a $2 profit, one cake $1 profit, and so on. So now, the goal in this problem is to find the high utility item set. The sets of items appear together and will make a lot of money for the business. Maybe they are not frequent, or maybe they are, but we want to find what make at least some minimum amount of money. So we use a minimum threshold, we call the minimum utility, and we want to find everything make more money than this. Okay, so let me show you an example. Here, if we set the minimum utility to $33, this is the result we want to find. We find, for example, that BDE together, bread, D and egg, for example, make $36. More, at least $33. BCD make $34 and so on. So we want to find such solution. Okay, so maybe you want to know how to calculate the money in this example. It is really simple. So here, if we have BDE, here I have five bread, and each bread is a $2 profit. So I do five multiplied by two. I have three times the item D. So item D is $2 profit, so three multiplied by two. I have one egg, 
one egg is three dollar so three multiplied by one then i do the same thing and it give me the amount of money so it's not difficult to calculate but we want to have some efficient algorithm to find quickly all the sets of items that make the most money this is the most challenging part it is to design the algorithm so today i will not talk much about the algorithm because we don't have so much time okay so there are several algorithms for this problem here you have a few of them i will not talk about the details now i want to talk to you about some related project about this just to give you an overview this is my goal today in another work we looked at the recent high utility item set here we want to find the set of items that the people buy together that recently make a lot of money so here for example you have a chart we have the time and we have the utility like the money maybe this is the utility for some products like the bread and we want to find that some sets of items bought together recently make a lot of money so in the past maybe not so much but recently uh, they have made a lot of money for example so to do this we use the decay function for example so here we skip the details another project we did is to find the sets of items that have some drift in the data a drift means that over time the utility will change a lot at some time points so here for example we have the time and at some points in time there's a drift so the utility the money will change for example for some reason so here i give you some example for example on a tv show some people say that some products is very good and suddenly everyone start to buy the product so there will be a drift so we want to find this drift where people buy some products together another project uh, we did in another paper is to find what we call the peak high utility item set so here we want to find some products that the people buy together that during some time interval will make a lot of money so we want to find the time interval where some products purchased together make a lot of money so here let me show you some example i don't know if you eat this before these are some moon cakes very popular in china and over time during the year not so many people buy the moon cake but during the mid autumn festival there is a peak where a lot a lot of people will buy this so we designed some algorithms in our work to find automatically the periods where something will have a high utility like make a lot of money over time okay so of course the utility here is, i talk about the money but it could be other things if we apply this to a computer network it could be other things instead of the money for example uh, there are many other things we can do with pattern mining in another paper what we did we looked at the utility not only at the utility but also at the cost so here for example let me just show you some example quickly we have on the left a database with some sequences of treatments that people will take at the hospital to be cured for from some disease okay so for example the first patient the first person at hospital takes some medicine a and it costs four dollar then some medicine b two dollar e c d and so on and then we have the utility that means the people are cured or not maybe they die okay so we have different sequences of treatment some medicine and we know the people are cured or die and so on so the goal is to find the patterns 
that has a low cost and will give you the high utility, for example. Not cost a lot of money, but will get you cured, for example. So this is another example of pattern mining coin. There are many other examples. Here I show you one more. Okay, we have the frequent episode mining. So here we have a sequence of events over time. So we have the time, like AC, then followed by A, followed by AB, followed by A, AB, C, B, D, and so on. So maybe we want to find the K most frequent patterns in this sequence. So maybe we find that A followed by A appear three times within a maximum duration of two time units. So let me show you this. So here I have A followed by A, A followed by A, and A followed by A again within two times units. So I can find all what we call episodes that repeat many times in a sequence of events, like in a computer network, for example. Okay, so this was just a brief overview of some pattern mining problem we can do to, to look in the data, to find some useful patterns in the data. So now I want to talk to you briefly about some applications. Uh, for the computer network and security, for example, we could look at the events in a computer network as a sequence of events. And then we want to find the correlation between the events to understand what events will cause some other events in the network. Also, we call for security, we can analyze the behavior of the malicious programs to find some patterns in the behavior of program that maybe will help us to detect the malicious program. We could also analyze the behavior of user or also try to detect some unusual patterns that maybe will be some security risk. Okay, there are, I think, many, many possibilities. Some uh, current challenge in pattern mining, it is to design some more efficient algorithm, new strategies, data structures, uh, to also handle some more complex data, to find more complex pattern, and to design new measure to find the useful patterns. And of course, to do some new application, like in network and security. Uh, I just want to tell you briefly that we have a data mining software you can find called SPMF online. It is open source in Java. It can be used from the command line as a user interface. It has more than 100 algorithms you can use to find patterns in the data. If you want, you can search for SPMF and you will find it and you can use if you want to do something with your data. Okay, so that is all for my presentation today. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any question, feel free to ask or to contact with me. Thank you.